Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site-wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today I've got my Brazilian buddies back with me with Omar Plain Lycia. He keeps Godless Shrine, Bloodstained Mire, Plains, Agadim's Awakening, Glorious Protector, Nighthawk Scavenger, and an Ember Cleave. I am playing Shorakai, keeping two islands, Azorius Signet, Soul Ring, Smuggler's Copter, Arcane Denial, and Sky Sovereign console flagship. Andreas is playing the new Atraxa. He keeps an Avenging Hunt Bonder, Green Sun's Twilight, Rafine's Tower, Nature's Lore, Decanter of Endless Water, an Island, and a Basilisk Gate. Manuel has paired up Kodama and Livio, and his opener has an Elvish Piper, Panharmonicon, Two Forests, Karametra God of Harvests, Path of Ancestry, and a Plains. Omar wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. I play an island for turn and cast Soul Ring. Andreas draws and plays a tap for Fiend's Tower. Manuel plays a forest and passes. At the end of turn, Omar cracks his Bloodstained Mire to find a Blood Crypt. Omar draws and plays a Godless Shrine which he has come in tapped and passes. I play an island and then cast an Azorius Signet. I then cast a Cultivator's Caravan and pass to Andreas. Andreas has a forest for turn and pays two for nature's lore, going to find a Canopy Vista. Manuel plays a forest and has enough to cast Livio. Omar plays a Swamp, and then pays 3 for a Nighthawk Scavenger. I draw and cast Shorakai, but with nothing else, pass turn. Andreas plays a Basilisk Gate, and then taps 3 for a Decanter of Endless Water. He then taps the rest to cast Noble Heritage, and passes turn. Manuel plays a Path of Ancestry, and then goes to combat. He hits Andreas with Livio, and passes after that. Omar draws, and plays a Plains, and then casts a Dockside Extortionist, and gets to make 6 treasures. He follows up with Sword of War and Peace, and then equips it onto the Nighthawk Scavenger. Going to combat, he swings the Scavenger at Manuel, who takes the hit, and the sword triggers. After that, Omar gains some life, and on his end step, I activate Shorakai, drawing 2, pitching one, and making a pilot. I draw and play cast an Arden Veil, which comes in tapped. I then cast Urza, Prince of Krug, and pass turn. Andreas plays a Baldur's Gate, and then casts a Green Sun Twilight, putting six into the X. This gets him a Seagate and an Illithid Harvester. As the Harvester comes in, he flips the Livio and the Nighthawk Scavenger, and with nothing else, passes. Manuel draws and plays a Plains. He then casts a Panharmonicon and passes. Omar draws and also plays a Plains. He then foretells a card and passes. During his end step, I activate Shorakai again. I draw and play a Mech Hanger. I then tap my Pilots and Urza to crew up Shorakai. Going to combat, I swing Shorkai at Andreas, who chumps with the Illithid Harvester. In my second main phase, I then cast a Smuggler's Copter. Andreas draws and plays an Island. He then casts an Atraxa, and gets to keep a Soul Guide Lantern, Faceless Butcher, Planes, and Infernal Offering. With his one mana left, he casts a Soul Guide Lantern, and he exiles Karn from my graveyard. We also remember the Noble Heritage trigger, which puts 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters onto Atraxa. And Manuel takes the deal as well, putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the face down Livio. With nothing else, he passes. 
Manuel draws and plays a forest. He just casts Karametra and passes. Omar's main phase has Vito coming in. And he goes to combat, sending the face down Nighthawk scavenger at Andreas. Andreas takes the hit for a total of 10, and Omar gets to gain 3 life. This triggers Vito, and he has it deal 3 to me. With nothing else, Omar passes, and during his end step, I activate Urza to make a soldier token copy of my soul ring. I draw and cast Path to Exile and target Atraxa. She gets exiled, and Andreas finds a land. I then play a Peacewalker Colossus, and then crew up the Smuggler's Copter with a Pilot Token. Going to combat, I swing the Copter at Omar, and he takes the 5. In my post-combat main phase, I play out a Thought Monitor, drawing 2, and passing. Andreas draws and plays a Plains. He replays a Traxa, and gets a Heapgate, Selfless Glyphweaver, and a Marble Diamond. He also gets the trigger from Noble Heritage, and Atraxa gets two more plus one plus one counters, and Manuel takes the deal, getting two more counters on his Livio. After that, Andreas passes. Manuel draws and casts a Fierce Empath, going to find a forest off Karametra. The Fierce Empath trigger then tutors, allowing him to find a Galta and Maverin, and an Apex Devastator because of the Panharmonicon doubling the trigger. Manuel then follows up with an Esper Sentinel, and passes. Omar draws, and goes to combat. He swings the face down Scavenger to Andreas, dealing damage, and then gaining 4 life from the Sword Trigger. He then uses the Veto Trigger to deal 4 damage to me. In his post-combat main phase, Omar plays out Lycia, and then activates her ability, losing some life to give her some plus 1 plus 1 counters. He then passes, and on his end step, I activate Shorakai, drawing two, discarding one, and making a pilot. I draw and play an island. I then activate Peacewalker Colossus, animating Shorakai, and then activate it again to crew up the Cultivator's Caravan. I then use pilot tokens to crew up the Copter and the Colossus. I then play a Cyber Drive Awakener. This gives all of my vehicles flying, and I move to combat. I swing all of my creatures at Omar in the air, and before damage, he casts a Glorious Protector to block. He then tucks away the Dockside Extortionist and Vito, and chumps Shorakai with the Protector. He then takes 20 damage, but with the Protector dying, the Dockside and Vito re-enter, and this time Omar gains 14 treasures. After that, I pass turn. Andres' Noble Heritage triggers on his upkeep, and Manuel takes the deal again, adding more counters to Livio. He then draws for turn, and plays a Heapgate. Andreas then plays an Avenging Hunt Bonder, and he goes to combat. He swings a Trax at me for 11 in the air, and I take the hit. After that, he plays a Selfless Glyphweaver, and then a Marble Diamond, and passes. Manuel draws and plays a Forest. He casts Kadama, and gets to go and find a Plains off Karametra. With nothing else, he passes to Omar. Omar draws and casts a Painful Truth, putting three colors into it, which lets him draw three and lose three. He then moves the sword to Lycia and goes to combat. Omar swings Lycia at me and the face down Scavenger at Manuel. I jump with the Cyber Drive Awakener and Manuel blocks with his face down Livio. Omar does gain a bunch of life though from Lycia and he has the Veto Trigger deal the damage to Manuel. After combat, Omar plays a Swamp and then a Soul Ring and passes. I draw and cast the Omen Keel. I then crew up Shorakai, the Caravan, the Colossus, and the Copter, and I move to combat. I swing everything at Andreas, and he blocks Shorakai with Atraxa and takes the rest, but does gain 11 life from Atraxa. I also get to exile the top 20 cards from Andreas thanks to the Omen Kill trigger, and I then play a Caves of Coilus from among them, and pass turn. Andreas puts two counters on Atraxa, and Manuel does the same on Kadama. He then draws, and plays a Forest. He follows up with a Faceless Butcher, exiling my Soul Ring token, and in response, I tap it to crew up the Omen Kill. 
Going to combat, he swings a Traxa at Omar and the Avenging Bond Hunter at me, which puts a double strike counter onto a Traxa. Before damage, Omar casts Heliod's Intervention, putting 9 into the X to gain 18 life. In response, Andreas cracks the Soul Guide Lantern to draw a card and see if he can find an answer, but finding nothing, I decide to save him by casting an Arcane Denial to counter the Intervention. Omar then dies from commander damage, and after gaining a bunch of life from Atraxa, Andreas casts a Cloud Kill to give everything minus 7 minus 7. In response, Manuel casts an Eerie Interlude to save his board, and Andreas then moves to his end step. With the Fierce Empath, with the fierce empath coming back, Manuel goes to find a Crater of Behemoth. Manuel draws and casts an Apex Evastator, which cascades into an Elemental Bond, Timur Sabretooth, Eternal Witness, and a Guardian Augmentor. He casts all of them, drawing two from the Bond and putting the Elvish Piper into play thanks to Kadama. The Eternal Witness puts a land into play thanks to Kadama as well, and the Apex Devastator then enters. This gets him two triggers from Kadama thanks to the Panharmonicon, and he's able to put out a Crater Hoof Behemoth and Avenger of Zendikar, layering it so the Avenger and the tokens come in first, and the Crater Hoof then sees them all, pumping his board by plus 40 plus 40. This is enough to kill everyone, winning Manuel the game. Game review time. I probably should have been focusing more on Manuel this game, but he didn't seem like much of a threat, and frankly he wasn't doing much other than adding counters to his face down Livio. That being said, as soon as Kadama came out with the Panharmonicon out, we all probably should have reassessed the board state. Shorkai continues to be a lot of fun, and I like them very vehicle focused. I have been on the fence of switching to Katori because I like the idea of having a vehicle in my command zone, but at the same time having a commander that lets me crew up almost any vehicle, plus pumps them with Vigilance and Lifelink, is pretty sweet. I often want to find Katori at some point anyway, so having him in the command zone might be better. I'm surprised that considering Omar made almost 18 to 20 treasures from his two Dockside triggers, that he wasn't more of a threat. Unfortunately, it seemed like all of his draw spells were either hitting him lands or cards that really didn't impact him, so despite the fact that he had all that mana, the biggest thing he could really do was that Heliod's intervention, which, as you saw, didn't really help him all that much. Andreas' Atraxa deck is a lot of fun. He basically made it out of Commander Legends chaff, the Baldur's Gate version, so that explains why there's a lot of gates and kind of cards like that built into it. I think she's very powerful, but I think she's probably better suited for a 60 card format where you're able to fill up your hand with other cards, whereas in Commander, for 7 mana, I think you want something a little bit more impactful. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.